Hi guys, it's Ben here and welcome back to another video. It is preview time again. Leicester City versus Liverpool is this week's Premier League fixture for the Reds. It is a Saturday lunchtime game, which means that this week we're the ones setting the tone. It's Man City that are playing at tea time on Saturday against Newcastle. So whereas the week just gone by, obviously they dropped points against Wolves in a tricky game. We went on to beat Brighton and take that initiative in the title race early on. Now we're the ones with are going to be a tougher away game at the 15-16 Premier League champions Leicester, whilst they play Newcastle, I suppose, might even be an easier test than Brighton, the way things are going at the moment. But anyway, it's about Liverpool, it's about keeping that perfect record going. We've had three games, three wins, as you all know. Um, as soon as the fixture list came out um, in June, these were the four games, obviously, we identified before the international break. And I said, you know, we needed, we needed 10. Obviously, if we can get 12 points, then phenomenal. I mean, 12, very much achievable. Um, and now it is likely, you know, we've won those three games. Palace was a tough one. Um, you never know we're going to get a West Ham and Anfield, so that wasn't easy. We've navigated that and the Brighton one. They were a good side. Um, and here we are at Leicester. And a Leicester without Jamie Vardy as LB on Saturday. Um, they've had a decent start to the season, though. After that defeat at Old Trafford, that narrow defeat 2-1. Um, they're now above United in the table. They've beaten Wolves and Southampton since with a late winner uh, against Saints the other day. It's all coming together relatively nicely now for Leicester. They made some good signings in the summer. Um, and there's a good team spirit there. Obviously, Harry Maguire is emerging. He's still not a player I particularly love. and like He's not, he's not a player I want at Liverpool, but he's obviously doing a very good job at Leicester. Uh, James Madison came in for £25 million, um, from Norwich. And I saw him against United, and he looked like a really, really useful player. Very creative, very comfortable on the ball. Looks like he's going to create a lot for them this season. They made some good defensive signings as well. The two centre-backs, they signed Pereira from Porto as well. Uh, he's been playing on the wing a little bit. So, yeah, uh, obviously Danny Ward went there, Johnny Evans, so some experience as well so yeah pretty pretty impressive what we've seen from Leicester so far and their signings I think they'll be okay this season top half I think is a minimum uh, you'd expect from them they're probably pushing for the sort of best of the rest seventh and eighth place sort of positions uh, and the King Palace Stadium is never easy to go to we struggled there um, for a few years didn't we we, we lost their tuna when they won the Premier League uh, we lost their 3-1 the following season in a dire performance we lost their 2-0 in the League Cup last season I think that was my first visit to the King Power and then a few days later we played them in the league I was there as well um, and Coutinho really inspired us to a 3-2 win Mo Salah scored a header Coutinho scored a free kick Henderson got the decisive goal at the end it was a, it was a crazy game with Mignolet making mistakes and saving penalties and um, our, our set piece defending was questionable but we got the win and now we're much better equipped to go and do the exact same thing so Leicester set up with a 4-2-3-1 um, at Southampton it was Schmeichel and goal Amati, Morgan, Maguire and Chilwell it's a back four you can get at you know I, I like Ben Chilwell's delivery he's, he's, he's a good technical player but I'm not convinced about him defensively Harry Maguire I think He's just, I just think he's very quick. I, I, think, I don't think he's very good on the turn. Morgan, we know, isn't very quick. I don't know whether they'll stick with, with that as a centre-back jury. Maybe John Evans will come back in. And Amati at right-back, you know. Uh, and Didi and Mendy is a very solid uh, midfield base. Uh, James Madison playing uh, in that free role ahead of them. And then Damari Gray and Pereira either side of Kelechi and Nacho. I really like Damari Gray. Um, Ian Acho obviously knows how to score, he's a very dangerous player, uh, but you know, not having Jamie Vardy up front is a big blow for them. We know how much Vardy loves scoring against Liverpool, it's so annoying. Um, so yeah, really pleased that he won't be on the pitch. Who will be on the pitch for Liverpool? Now, I'm still getting messages, I'm still getting comments, I'm still getting you know, lots of feedback about Fabinho. Um, there was a piece that came out in the Echo today, I've not read all of it, but it, along the lines of, look what happened to Bakayoko at Chelsea, he was rushed in, given loads of responsibility straight away, and it just didn't work out. And, and it's not just because they're both central midfielders that came from uh, Monaco that I'm making this comparison, or the Echo have made this comparison, but you've got to be sensible, and you've got to look at how, I keep bringing it up, but how Andy Robertson and Alex Oxlade chamberlain were integrated into the Liverpool side over time, and also, we're winning games, and who would you sacrifice from the midfield three? I mean, I suggested before Brighton, um, I thought there might be a change in there. Um, yeah, I mean, as, as, much, as well as we played at Palace, I thought something to freshen up. You know, I'm not sure who or what, but I thought Henderson might come in because every game that we've played so far, on 60 minutes, I've been calling for Henderson, um, even before 60 on, on Saturday. Uh, and Henderson has come on and made the difference. So maybe this time we will see him. But 
if you held a gun to my head, I would say we're going to be unchanged again. Um, I mean, Genie Van Adam is playing the football of his life. Um, really, really enjoying watching him play. Um, I guess it's a slightly deeper role, but it's quite a flat midfield three, in fairness, with Milner and Cater maybe doing the majority of the pressing forward. Um, but Van Adam has been instrumental in the middle there. Milner is, you know, I mean, him, those two, Van Adam and Milner, for me, have been, have been, you know, the central hub of everything we've been doing right so far. Um, with Van Dijk and Gomez behind them, the spine of this team has been t tremendous. Didn't think Naby Cater was terrific against Brighton. Um, but you know his impact is still there for us to see, and he should be playing here at Leicester. Um, you know, getting getting in between his lines and creating stuff uh, for the guys ahead of him. His link up play with Mane is getting there, even if it's not perfect. I mean, Mane was obviously really poor against Brighton, um, but yeah, and, and also the front three. I mean, you know, of course we want to see Shakiri given a chance at some point. We want to see Sturridge in the team at some point, but. The front three is the front three. It's the best front three we've got. It's the best front three anyone's got. And yeah, they need to play their way into form. Firmino, you know, we can't write him off already. I know, I know he's not scored yet and he's maybe not looked 10 out of 10, Roberto Firmino. But um, yeah, he's got to play. Mo Salah, obviously got to play. Two goals and three games for him. Sadio Mane, three goals and three games for him. Got to play, even though he had a stinker at the weekend. Defence obviously cannot change. So yeah, I mean, I struggle to see, with the exception of Jordan Henderson, who has been coming on an impacting game already and is ready to do so again, what changes are necessary? I don't see the Fabinho thing as necessary yet. It's about to become two games a week. We're about to need to start rotating, but for now, we've had a week in between games. We're winning all these games without conceding any goals. Let's get the same lads on the pitch. Um, you know, maybe, I'll, maybe I was jumping the gun before the Brighton game, suggesting that Henderson, even Alana might come in. Um, you know, I, I guess uh, I underestimated the importance of, of the momentum that this current team had had got already um, and having seen them manage their way through the Brighton game even if not spectacularly um, I think I'm happy to see another unchanged lineup and I, I guess because the question marks are mainly in midfield they're, they're the only things we're having a debate over and it was the midfield that won us the, the battle against Brighton so yeah I mean Wijnaldum doesn't deserve to be to be dropped nor does James Milner um, and it's not necessary at the moment with these weeks in between games. So yeah, I'm happy to admit I was wrong to suggest Henderson should come in against Brighton. And I'm saying now you guys can agree or you can disagree. Um, leave a comment with your thoughts on this starting eleven. But I think uh, we should go unchanged again. I think Leicester might go pretty much unchanged. I mean, if I look at their bench, they brought Marco Brighton on, they brought Shinji Okazaki on, uh, they brought Gazal on, um, the Algerian against Southampton in midweek. Um, Gazal played and scored, Ebora played and scored, Ian Acho scored and Christian Fuchs played it. They played a back three with Johnny Evans in there, no Harry Maguire. So, I mean, I, you know, we'll see. We'll see with Leicester, we'll see with Liverpool. I think we'll go unchanged. Um, as far as odds are concerned for this game, I mean, you know, I'm not, I know some of you like a bet, some of you don't. Um, Leicester are as long as 7-1 to one with Bet Victor to beat us at, at home, um, which is very long, especially, you know, considering our record. Um, at the King Power isn't brilliant and Leicester are a, a, a good upper mid-table side um, yeah I don't know I, I, I'm not as confident as the bookies are that we're going to win this one um, you know have I got it in me to pick us to draw this one I don't know I mean honestly I don't think a point is a disaster at Leicester but with the pace that it's going to be going at this season um, you know we kind of obviously have to be going for three and I'm going to go for three um, I think we might, I think we might win one nil again you know I think a one nil would do me beautifully here. Uh, James Milner penalty, 1-0, get out of there, get into an international break with maximum points, top of the table. That would suit me down to the ground. Um, so yeah, I mean, from a tactical point of view, if they are going to go 4-2-3-1 or, or probably more of a 4-3-3, if they're going to match us man for man or whether that three at the back um, in midweek was an opportunity for Club well to test that with, with the game against us in mind, I, I really don't know. Very interested to find out. But yeah, I mean, obviously all over the pitch, we should be better than them. Um, but they have got players capable of moments of quality. Obviously, Damari Gray, uh, Madison, Ian Acho, Ndidi is obviously, you know, it's going to be a hell of a battle in midfield there with him and Mendy if they do indeed play. Um, and Harry Maguire's a threat from set pieces. So fascinating early game of the weekend, I think. Even for neutrals, they'll be really, 
really looking forward to this one. Um, so yeah, let's hope we can go there and get the win. I'm going for a 1-0 with James Milner, so leave your comments uh, with your score predictions. Let's look at the, look at the other fixtures. Um, so as I, as I mentioned, Man City hosts Newcastle. Chelsea are playing Bournemouth at 3 o'clock. You have to take Chelsea seriously at the moment. They're winning games. Um, Spurs go to Watford, and again, they look pretty, pretty formidable at the moment. Tottenham, um, United are at Burnley. I mean, God, I mean, if that is a game where they could... They could drop points there, you know. I know Burnley have got this Thursday Sunday thing, and they're not playing too well at the moment. But God, that is that is possible. Banana skin for United. The Arsenal go to Cardiff. That should be uh, straightforward for them. So there we go. Let's hope we can get out of this top of the pile going into the international break. Um, we've got the Champions League draw tomorrow uh, and the Carabao Cup draw tomorrow. I will. Um, do something on the Champions League draw, probably just come on here and react to it um, once I've got all my flights booked and everything. Um, we'll see where we are with that. Very excited for that. If you want to leave a comment, again, dream group, your dream group. Um, I think I, I think if, if we're in pot three, I think something like Real Madrid, Borussia Dortmund and Club Brugge is my kind of dream draw. So leave yours down below. Um, and yeah, drop a like on the video. Make sure you're sharing out to all your Liverpool fan mates because lots of you always say to me, how have you not got many more subscribers, Ben? Why haven't you got... If you deserve 5k, well share it please, that would be lovely, that would be very very kind. Um, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat and Facebook, I'm very active on Instagram at the moment. I've got more followers on Instagram than I have on here, so if you're not over there, what are you doing? Um, and yeah, obviously subscribe to this channel if you're new, and I will see you tomorrow after the Champions League draw. Take care.